Today we're going to look at this nice integral which was sent in a letter from Ramanujan to Hardy. So what are we going to show? Well, let's say that alpha times beta are two numbers that have a product of pi. Then we'll show that the square root of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus alpha squared x squared over the hyperbolic cosine of pi x dx is equal to, well, the same thing, but where alpha is replaced with beta. So I think there's some cool symmetry inside of this equation. Now we're gonna use a couple of tools here, one of which we've used on the channel before and we derived earlier, and that is this hyperbolic secant in terms of this nice series. So we've got it's equal to four pi times this sum as n goes from zero to infinity, minus one of the n, two n plus one, all over two n plus one squared pi squared plus four x squared. So like I said, we derived that on the channel before. We're also gonna use this tool right here, which we will derive now, and that is the integral from zero to infinity of cosine two n x over hyperbolic cosine pi x is half the hyperbolic secant. Okay, so let's jump into that. So we're gonna first replace this hyperbolic cosine in the denominator with its exponential form. And so that means we've got a two in the numerator because this hyperbolic cosine is the sum of some exponentials over two, so that'll flip up to the numerator. And then we've got this integral from zero to infinity, this cosine two in x, and now this is gonna be e to the pi x plus e to the minus pi x. Now what I'll do is factor an e to the minus pi x, or maybe an e to the pi x out of the denominator and put it in the numerator. So that's gonna leave us with a two, which is still out front. And then we'll have e to the minus pi x cosine two n x in the numerator. And now in the denominator, we have one plus e to the minus two pi x. Okay, nice. Now next up, what we'll do is expand that one over one plus e to the minus two pi x as a geometric series. So that means we're gonna have two, and then after that, the sum as k goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the k, because here our common ratio is that minus e to the minus two pi x. And then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus 2k plus one times pi times x. So we get one of these e to the minus pi, pi x's from this right here, and we get the 2k rest of them from this expansion of the geometric series with the appropriate common ratio like we said before. And then this is times two or cosine two in x dx. Okay, nice. Now I'm gonna underline this integral in green and just point out that we have evaluated an integral like that on the channel before. We actually came up with a general form of the antiderivative of something like e to the ax times the cosine of bx. And we did it using a matrix, actually. We found a two by two matrix that modeled the derivative and we use the inverse to take the antiderivative. I think it was a pretty nice video. But that being said, we're just gonna jump to the antiderivative of this given that we've done that on the channel before and just to keep this a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna bring down all of the parts that we have so that sum as k goes from zero to infinity minus one to the k. And then the antiderivative looks like this. We'll have e to the minus 2k plus one times pi times x, and that's gonna be over 2k plus one squared times pi squared, and then plus four n squared. And then we'll have two n times the sine of two n x. And then after that, it'll be minus 2k plus one times pi times the cosine of two in x. And now we've got to evaluate that from zero to infinity. 
So notice evaluating that at infinity, or really taking the limit as the argument x goes to infinity, will just produce zero, given that we have this exponential here with a negative exponent. So that means the only thing that contributes to this value is the plugging in of zero. Plugging it into sine gives us zero. Plugging it into cosine gives us one. But it's the lower bound, so that's gonna flip this minus back to a plus. And in the end, that's gonna leave us with a two pi out front. And then that's from this two right here, this pi right here. And then this sum, as k goes from zero to infinity of left over is minus one to the k, a two k plus one, minus one to the k from this, a two k plus one from this, and then over this two k plus one squared times pi squared plus four n squared. And now, well, we can replace this 2 pi with a 4 pi over 2, and then we can use this first tool, which again we derived on the channel earlier, and write this as 1 half, and then this hyperbolic secant of, well, what does it end up being? It ends up being the number n. Okay, nice. So now we have derived this second tool. Now we're ready to look at this third tool. Thanks for sticking around this long in the video. If you're enjoying what you see, make sure and give a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps out. Okay, so now moving on to this third tool, which is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus a squared x squared cosine 2bx. So this is like kind of a flavor of the Gaussian integral. In fact, it looks a lot like that, but with just a cosine term as well. So what we'll do is use oh, something called Feynman's trick for integration, which is famous on the internet. And that is we're going to take this and say that it's equal to a function i evaluated at 2b, where our function i evaluated at a variable t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus a squared x squared, and then cosine of t times x dx. And now we'll build an initial value problem for this function i. So let's first observe that if we evaluate this at zero, we get something that is really just a flavor of the Gaussian integral e to the minus a squared x squared. So I'm not gonna evaluate this. A quick substitution turns it exactly into the Gaussian integral. And you can see that this is root pi over two times a. So that's like our initial value. So now let's take the derivative. So if we were to take di by dt, let's observe we would get something like this. We'll have minus the integral from zero to infinity and then an x and then an e to the minus a squared x squared, and then a sine of t times x. That's because we had to take the derivative of the sine portion. The derivative of sine is negative cosine, the derivative of tx with respect to t is minus x. So that's where we got that. And now what we'll do is use a round of integration by parts on this integral. So we'll take u to be the sine of t times x, Notice that's gonna make du equal to t times the cosine of t times x dx. Keeping in mind that if we're gonna integrate this with integration by parts, we need to do derivatives and antiderivatives with respect to x. Okay, so that's our u du component for our integration by parts. And now that means that dv has to gobble up the rest. So that's gonna be x e to the minus a squared x squared dx for dv, taking the antiderivative, that means that v is equal to one over two a squared times minus one times e to the minus a squared x squared. I think that's pretty clear. It's just a standard kind of simple antiderivative. Okay. So now let's apply the integration by parts formula. So we have u times v. So notice that's gonna be attached to a minus sign. So let's see, u times v. So since it's attached to a minus sign, we've got a minus sign built in right here. That's gonna flip it back to a plus one over two times a squared. And then we have the sine of t times x and then our e to the minus a squared x squared. Now we're evaluating that from zero to infinity. 
And then let's see, after that we'll have minus the integral v du. But again, we've got three minus signs here. One from this, one from the v, and then one built into the integration by parts formula. So let's see, minus v du. So that's gonna end up giving us minus one over twice a squared. And then we've got a t, so I can take that out as well. And then the integral from zero up to infinity of, we'll have e to the minus a squared x squared cosine of t times x dx. Now let's see what goes on here. If we take the limit of this as x goes to infinity, we get zero because we've got the exponential. And if we evaluate that at zero, we also get zero. So that just simply gives us zero. And now let's observe that this term over here is simply our original function, i of t. So that builds us this differential equation. So I can bring this di by dt up and we see that it's equal to minus t over a squared times two times i of t. So that's our initial value problem. So I've got it written in a slightly non-standard way, but let's observe that that is our differential equation with the initial value. Okay, so now let's solve that. Okay, so before we solve this initial value problem, I'd like to tell you about my second channel math major, which is full of full courses in mostly upper division math classes. And I keep this channel ad free to remove all of the friction from learning. And I'm able to do that because of my support on Patreon and through channel memberships. If you'd like to help support me as I keep these ad free, maybe think about joining the patron or think about becoming a channel member, but there's no pressure. Okay, so let's finish this thing off. We have our differential equation and our initial value, and notice this is a separable differential equation, so we'll solve this via separation of variables. Notice we'll get di over i is equal to minus t over 2a squared dt. And then I know it's like kind of cheaty, but we'll just take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to i over here and t over here. So that's gonna give us the natural log of i. Maybe it should have an absolute value, but we'll just keep in mind that this is always gonna be positive, is equal to, let's see, that's gonna be minus t squared over four times a squared plus a constant c. But then that means that i of t is gonna be the exponential of our constant, which turns out to be this initial value, so we'll just jump straight to that. So pi over two times a of e to the minus t squared over four a squared. And then the only thing left to do is to evaluate this at twice b, and we'll see we get exactly what we want. So we get root pi over two a and then e to the minus b squared over a squared, which is, like I said, where we wanted to end up for this integral. Okay, so now we're ready to paste all of the parts together to prove this identity. All right, so now let's get towards the end here. So let's start with one half times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus lambda squared times y squared over this hyperbolic cosine of pi times y dy. And then just keep in mind that now we have one half times one over the hyperbolic cosine of pi times y, but that's exactly one half times the hyperbolic secant of pi times y. So that means we can replace the one half and the one over this hyperbolic cosine with this integral right here, transforming this single integral to a double integral. And now this double integral is going to look like the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus lambda squared um, y squared times the integral from zero to infinity of this hyperbolic cosine of two times pi times x times y over this cosine hyperbolic again of pi times x. And I misspoke, this numerator should have been a regular cosine. And then we have that this is dx dy. 
So again, what we just did is we took this one half and then this hyperbolic cosine in the denominator and we replaced it with this second tool right here. Okay, nice. And now what we'll do is work on this double integral a different way. So I'm gonna first separate this out into pieces and those pieces are gonna look like the integral from zero to infinity of one over this hyperbolic cosine of pi times x and then the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus lambda squared y squared um, times the cosine of two pi xy and then now we'll have this is dy dx. So now we've got something like that going on. And now what we'll do is take this thing that I'm underlining in magenta and observe that it is in the form of this third tool right here. So we'll replace this underline in magenta using the third tool. And that's going to give us the square root of pi over 2 times lambda, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus pi squared times x squared over lambda squared, all over this hyperbolic cosine evaluated at pi x dx. Okay, good. But now let's maybe compare what we have on both sides of this equation. No, we've got a half times a certain integral and then a root pi over two times lambda times a certain integral. But in fact, that's very, very similar to what we have right here. In fact, if we cancel the twos, this is exactly what we have right here with uh, certain values of alpha and beta. So if we, for instance, set lambda and beta equal to pi over lambda, notice that we most definitely get alpha times beta is equal to pi. And we also, after moving some things around here, get exactly what we need. And that's maybe a little more clear if we cancel the twos, bring this lambda up over here, or maybe part of this lambda over here as the square root of lambda, and then we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus lambda squared x squared over this hyperbolic cosine piece. And here I replaced my y's with x's as they were dummy variables. And then, well, if I brought a square root of lambda here, that means I'm left with a square root of lambda in the denominator. And then I have the integral from zero to infinity of, now this is gonna be minus pi over lambda quantity squared times x squared in the exponent um, over the hyperbolic cosine of pi x dx. And now you can see we've got exactly what we need. So notice the coefficient here is in the radical. It's squared in the exponent. The coefficient here is in the radical and it's squared in the exponent. And furthermore, these two coefficients kind of clearly multiply to pi. Okay, so that means that we've established the formula we want to. And that's a good place to stop.